Hey, it's Lima Comas. Welcome back to my studio. We're here for lesson three in the Batik project. And this week, it's very exciting. We're going to be applying color. So I just want to remind you, um, for the beginning of this lesson, you should have your project. Um, you've outlined everything with Gouda and let it dry. And then you've got it stretched on your stretcher bars or cheap frame like I have, and we're ready to go with this. Hopefully you've posted, again, what you did, because that enters you in a drawing for the Dynaflow um, fabric paints that I'm gonna be using. Now I should tell you, this is the set I chose to use, but Dynaflow actually has a couple of different color schemes. And so these are very br bright and vibrant. This is the Exciter pack, because I thought that sounded exciting, and it works for the, the kind of picture that I'm gonna be doing. but. Don't feel that you have to be tied to this. Look at what's available, and if you like more muted colors, go with it. But don't forget to post. So I am going to move around to the, oh wait, some other things that you should have um, is are some brushes. So I have chosen three different ones. One is really pointy to get into those little tight spaces. And this is just a cheap uh, plastic one. It's a little bit bigger. And then I also know I'm going to be filling in some background, so I got a wider brush. Um, there's nothing special about these. Um, it's just a cheap variety pack that I picked up at the craft store. And you can use anything that you've got. So also you want to have a bowl of water um, just to rinse your brushes out. And for my paint palette, I use a very, another cheap, cheap thing, which is a paper plate. Get the kind that's sort of coated. Um, if it's just raw paper, a lot of your dye is going to soak into that and you want it to kind of sit on top. So get the ones with the, the plastic coating on them. Okay. And now I'm going to move around to the other side so you can look over my shoulder again. All right. Welcome back. You're over my shoulder. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Hey, just in case you're wondering, when you applied the Gouda, uh, you want to let it dry. should be about 24 hours. Um, but I have to tell you, I was doing this uh, last week and we, it rained here for two days. And so, of course, it didn't dry very, fel um, dry very fast. But if it's a, you're in a hurry, you can just hit this with a hairdryer and dry it that way and that'll work. Now, today we're going to start applying color. I'm using these little uh, Dynaflow bottles. I like them because they're kind of like the Gouda bottle. They've got a little tip on them. It's important to shake them up, okay, before you put them out. And you should know, too, these are technically not dyes. They're paints. And one of the reasons I like to use them is because you don't have to do advanced preparation to the fabric to get the color to soak in and set. These are painted on, but they're very thin. They don't change the hand of the fabric. They don't make it stiff. So they work very much like dyes, but again, they're so much easier. These are water soluble. So if you happen to get it on you or get it someplace you don't want it, you can wash it up with a ray. You can rinse it out. It'll come out. Don't let it set a long time, but you can quickly rinse it out. These don't become permanent until you heat set them, until you go over them with an iron. So that's great because it gives you a lot of flexibility. It's easy, clean, up. It's not so messy as uh, some fabric dyes. So I'm going to start over here with my um, seaweed. And so I'm going to make it green. And I'm just going to put a couple dots out on my paint palette. And because the seaweed is dimensional, sometimes it's turning and flowing, it shouldn't be one flat color. Whoops, didn't shake. Um, it should be darker up here in the edges where shadows are being thrown. Also, if you make the edges a little darker, it makes your um, object appear dimensional, like it curves back. Something else I do is when I first start painting, I dab my brush in water, and I'm just gonna paint it along the area. Just put water, not a lot, because you don't wanna saturate. You know, get it really sloppy wet. But I'm going to just put some water here, and it helps the dye flow in, or the paint, excuse me, the paint flow in. You don't want to do a lot of scrubbing or excessive water because the Gouda is water soluble and it will begin to loosen up. I mean, you've got plenty of time to work, but you know, all things in moderation. So I'm going to put some water here and here and here. And that starts to fill in. There 
we're just gonna oops do these guys all right and then I'm gonna take my green and I'm gonna start in the middle and just started brushing it on it works pretty easily and just fill it um, take it up to the edge it'll carry itself over a little bit you know it, it'll wick to the edge and you can decide how strong you want it to be um, seems pretty strong to me I'm gonna put it in here and then along these edges I want it to feel like it's in shadow so I'm just gonna tip that blue and bring it out here kind of an aqua color and work some of that in to the edge the corners and then down here at the bottom I think I have a lot of shadow and I might take my other another brush because I'm not done with this color yet and I'm gonna kind of blend it in just scoot it around so it's not such a harsh and you can see how it's already starting to blend and wick but you can help with that And then this seaweed here in the back, it's further back, so I'm going to use some more of my dark green color in there, or make it a little darker green. And then I'll push it back, be real careful there. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of shaking again today. Put this in here. And then I'm going to add a little more blue and do those dark edges. That's going in behind. Okay. And I'll blend that a little bit. So I think you can see where that's going. And I just do this third string too. Uh-oh. And right here you can start to see I've um, maybe not put enough Gouda and I have a little bit of that green bleeding out. Okay. And one of the things I'm going to do is just add a little water. And that will continue to wick out and it won't be so bright. I am I know that I'm going to paint this with a dark blue, something more like this deeper turquoise, and those colors will kind of blend in. Here, it's going to be a little problematic on my sand. But that's part of what makes it um, handmade, maybe? So, adds a little bit to it. Um, I'm going to go over here to another part, this fish and add um, some colors. Let's see here, let's go with some orange. Put those, whoops, shake. And to darken that around some of the edges, I'm going to put a little bit of orange over near it. And this area is a little thinner than what I did with the seaweed, so I'm going to go to work with my pointy little brush and make sure I get all that green washed out of it. Still looks a little green, but I think it'll work. Oops, and I'm going to put a little water. Oops. Now I'm dripping water on my fabric, which isn't such a big deal. It's a little more critical when it's got color on the edge of the brush. So I'll do that. And on my fish, I plan to do this in orange, and I'm going to do this in a darker purple. So I'm going to do the orange stripes first because they're lighter, and if a little bit of my orange seeps through, I'll know that's going to be there, and when I paint the purple over it, that darker color will do a better job of covering over the orange, or else stay away from it. Um, if it's really bad and you want to avoid it, you might have to stop, apply a little bit of Gouda, and wait for that to dry so that the purple doesn't bleed back into the orange. Okay. And then, here we go. And this is where you can just get really creative. 
um, can mix your colors, you can make them fade. I always think things look better when they're not a solid color, that there should be some change going on. So I kind of like the look of this stripe being really orange out on the tips. Whoops, and that isn't where it's bleeding through. I just touched my paintbrush. I'm being in a little bit of a hurry. And I like it going to a yellow right here. So I might just do that with the rest of my stripes too. Um, gonna add a little water. In here. Um, and give it variation. So don't think that you have to go just one color in any space. I think it's a lot more interesting when your color changes color. So we'll keep going. Um, I think this is going to be really exciting because when you start posting these online this week, it's where we'll really begin to see um, your project coming alive. Um, posting your drawing with Gouda was not as thrilling, for sure. But this is going to be better. So I'm really curious to see how creative people get and what they do as they apply um, their paints. Um, when you're done, let it dry. These should set for 24 hours before you do anything else with them. So you're going to have to be patient. Um, don't try and speed the process with your hair dryer like you can with the Gouda. But you'll work along with this. I'll just show you through the magic of video. This is a piece that I finished. Oh, and here's something I want to show you. I'm going to go back. Let's say I'm doing my background. I'm going to put some water here. And that's a lot of space just for, you know, blue paint. Um, so to add some interest, I'm going to apply blue paint. And, and then Ooh, I like how that spreads. That's kind of fun to watch. I would paint. And then just to give it some texture, I'm going to take a little bit of salt. Not a lot. I've seen people just throw down lots of salt, and the effect is so great that it's no effect at all. But just take a little pinch of salt and sprinkle it over the top. Okay? And then just let it dry. And you may be able to see it start. What it does is the salt dissolves, it draws uh, some of the dyes into it. And what you get is, let me flip this, what you get is an eff effect that's really similar. It looks like this. See how you have this texture? And this is where little grains of salt were added to it. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can put in the background. Or, I don't know, you could add it to the fish, maybe make them look more scaly. We'll see how that goes. And also, I blended. I went from the turquoise color at the top to this deeper blue color at the bottom. And then just, you know, use a wet paintbrush to blend those colors in. So it creates some depth in your picture. And as it goes to the background here, it should get darker. All right? So, again, go back, open up your colors, be sure you shake before you uh, put them out on your palette and use them. Get really creative. This is where I think this is the, the where you have the most fun in the project is applying the color. And then post your projects. We want to see what you're doing. All right, come back next week and I'll show you how to finish it all up. Mm -hmm.